Now, some of this is familiar territory for you because you did a biography of Elizabeth Bowen. I did, a hundred years ago, <laughs> something like in the mid-70s, I wrote about Elizabeth Bowen. And at that time, I knew uh, that she had had this connection with Charles Ritchie. And I actually met Charles Ritchie and got to know him then and went on knowing him. But I hadn't realized that it was 30 years of a passionate commitment. And I think my book would have been weighted slightly differently if I had known. And so that's rather nice that I can, not exactly putting the record straight, you could say I'm putting it crooked. Because <laughs> it's a very strange story. And this is the Canadian connection of the book. Tell me about who Charles Ritchie was. Charles Ritchie came from one of those blue blood, privileged Nova Scotia families. And he was totally Canadian. But in a way, he was very, very Anglo in that those families were. And when you met him, he was more like an English gentleman than any English gentleman has ever managed to be, you know, for, for accent and tailoring and charm and suavity and uh, sophistication. He was a very, very charming man. He was also a career diplomat, so he was quite, in a way, appeared quite kind of buttoned up and austere and official because he was he got to the very top of his career, you know, like he was ambassador to the United States, ambassador to Germany, ended up at the High Commission in London. He, he really was a, a very successful career diplomat. And though he had these published diaries, which did say, uh, it did show his kind of lively side up to a point, and it did talk about his great friend Elizabeth Bowen, who comes to see him in Bonn when he's in post there, it gives no inkling of the nature of his private diaries. And the poignant thing about this book is I had all Elizabeth Bowen's letters to him and none of his to her, but I did have his very private diaries, which I was able to drop in extracts at, at the right date, as it were, so that when she's saying one thing about their affair, he's writing something sometimes slightly different, you know. And it's one of those things you don't know about love affairs, that the inequalities, the ups and downs, and not everybody's feeling the same thing all the time. Now, are there diaries of hers somewhere hidden away, or they are no, all she destroyed, or she wasn't a diarist? She didn't do a diary. She wrote letters instead, really. A lot of her di letters are rather like diary letters. And they met in the, in the Second World War in 1941 in London. And I think it was just, you know what London was like in the war? Well, we don't, because we weren't there. But um, if you have read Elizabeth Bowen's short stories, she writes a lot about London in the war, the sort of uh, the people who stayed and didn't leave, this atmosphere of dangerous glamour and broken glass and bombs every night and everybody drinking a bit too much and everybody having affairs because you might be dead tomorrow and people were being killed in the you know civilians being killed as well as friends at the war and so the affair started passionately in that atmosphere and I think Charles would be uh, been amazed to know then that 30 years later at her death they were still as committed I don't think she would have been surprised because right from the beginning, as you can tell from the letters, she felt it was forever and her life depended on it. And so I think it's her willpower in a way that, that, that made it go on and on and on. Because he was, he was quite a ladies man. Neither of them, of course, uh, post her children for fidelity and, and, uh, and monogamy because uh, she was married to, to Alan Cameron. She was married to Alan Cameron, who was a civil servant and an administrator. And she'd married him when she was very young, when she was 20, in an uncertain kind of just beginning to write stories in her attic bedroom kind of girl. And he was like her rock. But I think probably, if we were honest, we'd say he was quite dull. And that if we were honest, we would say that sexually the marriage was quite null. They had no children. And so even before ch she met Charles, she'd had three affairs. But Charles was like the love of her life. And she never thought of breaking her marriage. She, it's partly the period. She was quite conservative with a small c. She believed in institutions. And so it worked quite well when she was married, but on a rather long rope, shall we say, and he was unmarried man about town, they could work it quite well. And it only became really imbalanced when he married because, you know, diplomats need a wife, maybe he wanted children, everybody said, oh, Charles, you should get married. And then they were both married. She didn't like that very much, but they were both married. 
And then four years after he married, her husband died, so she was free. But free kind of in a bad way because she was getting, she was seven years older than him. Uh, her best work, some people would say, was behind her, though she did write some more extraordinary books. And there was one which was, as it were, Charles's novel, The Heat of the Day. But and she was sociable and sought after and working well at her writing, but she was lonely. And he was married and moving into this sort of international public figure kind of mode. And that balance remained that way and it was not so easy. I, I, I felt, uh, I felt well, there was love at the yes. end of the book. And also then what is love? You know? Yes, yeah. Because I think if they'd actually managed to live together, it wouldn't have worked at all because you can't imagine having quarrel discussions about who puts the recycling out. You know, they weren't on that plane. No, they they had these amazing discussions about uh, yeah. everything. Yes, but not they yes. didn't have to worry about the no reality. No. Maybe in some that's ways. how love should be done. A splendid job, well done. Thank you. The book is Love's Civil War, Letters and Diaries Between Elizabeth Bowen and Charles Ritchie. I've been speaking with the editor, Victoria Glendinning, and Love's Civil War, published by McClelland and Stewart.